Welcome to Forum 360 with its global outlook and local view. I'm Ardeth Keck. We all feel that youth violence is worse than it was. Shootings daily, it seems. What can be done? Here to help us understand the issue of youth violence is Tamika Rose, Deputy Chief of Staff, Akron Mayor's Office, and the newly hired Danico Barkley, Buckley Knight, sorry, Youth and Community Opportunity Director for the City of Akron. Just what is going on in the City of Akron about youth violence? Has it gotten worse, Tamika? Um, I don't think it's gotten worse. I think that it's, it's kind of stable, but I think when family members lose a loved one, it seems like it's gotten worse. But um, when you look at the data, it has not gotten worse. It's not gotten better, and there, that's why we hired Danico to help improve um, youth and community opportunities in the city so that youth and um, youth that are not in school have opportunities. So if it's not after school opportunities, there's jobs available for them. Akron developed a plan in 2019 to try to make it better. What's the plan? So the plan, I will turn it over to Danico because he is now implementing the plan or working to implement the plan. So I'll turn it over to Danico to talk okay. about that. Thanks, Tanika. Yeah. Um, so the plan is really to um, look at what was presented to our mayor's office in 2019, uh, but also we want to make some revisions to the plan. Um, during the uh, plan being submitted to the city, it was in 2019, um, our pandemic COVID did not hit at the time. So I really want to make sure that we are revising the strategic plan to align with the current state of our community, which is coming from out of a pandemic. Uh, so that is one of my main priorities, just to make sure that we revise what's needed, adding um, language and adding um, substance around COVID. Um, but then also the next step is to work with those individuals who were um, a part of the strategic plan in 2019 uh, to make sure that one, uh, they still have a buy-in with helping in executing the plan but two, um, also getting their feedback and insight um, with the changes um, in our pandemic. Um, so I'm hoping and I'm assuming that a lot of organizations are gonna have additional feedback and insight to provide um, that will allow me to help execute in the strategic plan. Okay, we'll, we'll go into that a little bit more in a bit, but um, can you tell me what your background is? How come they hired you for youth violence? Awesome. So um, I'm Akron, Akron native, uh, born and raised, uh, grew up in North Hill. Um, and during my youth, um, I was blessed to be a part of a lot of uh, programs um, that was in our community. And it provided us with a lot of uh, male and uh, female mentors. And I think that that was one of the things that allowed me to become the person that I am, is having those strong mentors as a youth. Um, I also have been involved with athletics my entire life, so um, I was blessed to receive a full uh, scholarship to attend Malone University. And during my time at Malone University, uh, I had an opportunity to intern with the Stark County YMCA. And uh, that allowed me to learn a little bit about the mission of the YMCA, um, which is really focused on families and youth. Um, I was blessed to graduate college and start my career professionally uh, in Canton, Ohio, uh, serving as a YMCA sports coordinator. And I did, I did that for about four or five years um, before I began um, working as a sports director uh, for the Akron YMCA. Um, I have about 12 years of experience with the YMCA, uh, which is really the foundation of uh, what started my career, um, dealing with families and dealing with youth. But in addition to the YMCA, um, I also have worked as a case manager for uh, an organization called Minority Behavioral Health Group. Um, that organization uh, served the Bukdul uh, community and my office was housed directly in uh, Bukdul CLC. So often I was um, involved with not only my role as a case manager, but also um, connecting with those uh, key members in the school, um, from the principals to the high school counselors and that is kind of like what has created this passion of mine. So, um, I've always been around families and youth and uh, just providing the positive light um, is really what I'm passionate about doing. 
Okay, you have a lot of experience <laughs> working with you. Do you believe you can succeed in stemming the violence that exists? Yeah. Thanks. Um, I think it's a community approach, um, and it's awesome that I'm blessed to kind of steer the community. Um, but I definitely think that we have an opportunity to change our, uh, the, the, trajectory, the tra trajectory of um, our community, specifically around youth violence. Uh, but it's definitely going to be a community approach, making sure that um, I am working with those who have a passion of reducing youth violence. Okay. Is there a role of gangs in all of this, in the youth violence that we see? How about you, Tamika? So I don't necessarily say that there's a role of gangs. I think that you have little pockets of people that feel like they, you know, don't have anyone to turn to, so they have a, you know, someone that they reached out to. But I think that um, gangs do exist in Akron. Um, and, but I also think that there's opportunities for us as a community to reach out to them to see what we can do to assist them in giving them what they need. Um, I think, whereas Danico was speaking earlier, it's all about the community and he's done a fantastic job in his um, brief time at the city in connecting with the community, um, with legacy organizations, nonprofits, and just regular people that we wouldn't have normally thought to reach out to. So, um, for instance, when there was a fight at, correct, what school was that? Yeah, there was an incident that occurred between Akron East and Akron Bookdale High School. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, there was some students who were involved with the fight uh, during well, the game. Was that gang related? It wasn't gang related. No. Mm -hmm. um, but it was still um, an incident because of um, two different communities um, planning in the competitive um, nature. Uh, unfortunately, it got a little bit overhand and two uh, teams got into a fight. So instead of just kind of like allowing those who were involved, like the coaches or whatnot, uh, handle it, I wanted to be proactive and uh, be a part of um, the conversations of um, bringing those communities together, talking about what, was, uh, what, what occurred and then also coming up with some solutions on how to bring the communities together in a more positive light. Sounds good, sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, how do you contact gangs and, and make those kinds of approaches that you're talking about, Tamika? How, how do you do that? So we, you, when I think when people hear gangs, you think, oh, the rough and tough. But the thing is that they, they are average citizens like we are. And so they are looking for jobs like we are. Um, they are in the community and they seek, if they have been incarcerated previously, they are probably more than likely in some of the rehabilitation programs that we have in the city. Um, so there's opportunity to speak to them one-on-one. -on -one. South Street Ministries does a fantastic job at doing that, at speaking with them in the reentry community. Um, so does um, Frank Williams with Man to Man. There are numerous communities that when they speak one-on-one -on -one with those individuals, you may not know that they are part of a gang per se because they are just a human being like you and I and they just may have made a wrong decision um, based off of the circumstances, circumstances that life has dealt with dealt them. And so they are looking to make and improve their lives and become productive members of society. So I think that is where we are. We have provided funding for some nonprofit or organizations under the American Rescue Plan Act to help with those individuals that may have been incarcerated or that need assistance um, to improve their lives and find jobs. So we have um, funding for South Street Ministries, Man to Man, and we also have funding for mentorship programs for some of the youth in our community as well. Is that what, I, I have the uh, newspaper article here where the rescue plan has allowed you to give mm -hmm. $100,000, that's a lot of money, mm -hmm. to some organizations in Akron. And is that what they promise to do in order to get that funding? Yes, so they promise to do mentorship programs um, to um, 
provide additional circles of conversations for these young men and women. They've promised to help with um, helping them find jobs and things of that nature. And so Danico is working very closely with them and making sure that they, we, we are going to develop, we have developed metrics to make sure that they are um, doing exactly what we have asked them to do with the funding that we have provided them. Cool. Sounds like a, a great idea. Who came up with that idea? <laughs> I, I think uh, the community probably came up with that okay, idea. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. Does it make a difference if a person has strong relationships in their lives, a, a mom or dad or an aunt or an uncle or somebody like that who really cares about them? Yeah, absolutely. I can speak on that. Um, in addition to just the role that I serve for the city of Akron, I'm also a football coach for Akron East High School. And, uh, you know, not only do we call plays and, you know, yell at the kids and make them run, but we often spend time as those uh, mentors and father figures. And uh, it's interesting, you'll see, you know, young men who are, you know, yes, sir, no, sir, um, from three o'clock to 530. Um, and they'll do that for four years, you know, and then, you know, they'll graduate from college, from high school and no longer have that mentorship from three to six, three to seven, that's telling them what to do and what not to do. And often that is what leads a lot of our youth, younger adults into trouble. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, is there a difference between males and females in terms of violence? Well, ah. there, 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 are, there, there is are a difference. There are differences. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, you, you find more um, young men that are in trouble um, around violence, um, particularly around the after school time from three o'clock to about seven, eight o'clock. Um, but females and males both uh, mm -hmm. play a role in youth violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, why is there a difference in terms of um, males and females? Is it because the females have a, a better role model or? Well, do you I know? can't say that females have a better role model. I think that it's more of, you know, it depending on where that female is going, she may get in the, in the with a wrong crowd as well. So I think that that plays a key. I, I it might be that you know, a female connects with her mother more than she does, you know, and men can't connect with their mother if they are in a single family home. Right. So that may be a part of it, but I can say that females, they get into trouble just as much as the males do. I mean, it's, it's not, I mean, if they fight harder than men, I think, mm -hmm. when we see it out, you know, when we talk to police officers, they, they it's, right. it's rougher. On Forum 360 today, we're talking about uh, youth violence. And with me to help us clear up some of the concerns of youth violence and talk about it is uh, Tamika Rose, who is Deputy Chief of Staff for the Akron Mayor's Office, and the newly hired Danico Buckley Knight, Youth and Community Opportunity Director for the City of Akron. Okay, um, what are the settings where social relationships occur? What kind of places um, do ha help these, these young people? So I think that Danico has done a great job around um, identifying the settings. So they happen after school at the basketball games, at the football games. Um, they happen at the dances. They happen at local coffee shops, too. They happen in the parks, Lock 3. I think one of the parks that um, Danico talked about during one of our meetings was um, the North, what was it, the... Mm, Clay Park. Clay Park, and then the other one in North Hill that you guys used to frequent when you were in Patterson school. Park. Patterson Park. Mm -hmm. So the community centers mm -hmm. as well. Um, are places where social interaction can happen. And that helps young people to um, g build good relationships mm -hmm. as opposed to bad yes. ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
how can the community help? Uh, I know some community groups mm -hmm. are, are responding to the, the uh, American Rescue Plan mm -hmm. money, but otherwise, how can the community help? I think just providing a voice, um, providing a voice with, you know, what they would like to see um, in their community, um, but also providing opportunities for the youth, um, whether that's in the form of mentorship, whether that's in the form of a financial contribution um, on behalf of an organization who does great work for uh, youth. Uh, but it's really more of what is it that you can bring to the table to help in reducing youth violence. And I'm open arms willing to accept whatever you can bring to the table. And can you tell me about guns and our, I don't know, our, our romance with guns in this country? Does that make a difference in terms of youth violence? Yeah, I think that the romance with guns of the um, individuals that feel that it is a right for every individual to have a gun plays a significant part in that. And now not even have a, yeah. a license. Yes, so I think that that is a huge problem, a systemic problem that we have in our nation that doesn't just impact the African American community, but I mean, you certainly can see that it, you know, it plagues our, our community. Yeah, it certainly does. Um, is there any way to decrease the use of guns in Akron? Anything that we can do to, to stem that particular part of violence? I think until the federal and the state, let, until the federal government and the state government actually do something about how people get guns in their hands and make, so, make it so that people have restrictions and instead of decreasing the restrictions, there's absolutely nothing that the city can do because it's a personal responsibility. Does uh, youth violence go hand in hand with adult violence? Yeah, I would say so. Um, Often youth, um, often adults who um, are engaging in um, violence, um, there's a story behind that. And often it, it starts when they were youth. Um, there are many adults who have been, um, you know, trauma, traumatized through their um, upbringings, whether it's from um, a parent, whether it's from the neighborhood that they grew up in. Um, but often that plays a role into when you become an adult. Um, I think also the lack of opportunities is a huge area of what uh, contributes um, to adults and youth um, with youth violence. And I think that's kind of like what my role is, um, to provide more opportunities for our youth, um, which will in return um, reduce youth violence. Mm -hmm. Okay. What kinds of opportunities are we talking about? What can you do to give these youth uh, more opportunities? Yeah, well, I think if you look at just after school time, um, summer, um, those two areas are huge. Um, when the kids get out of school, if there's an opportunity to provide them with extracurricular activity, um, participate in a local youth football program, participate, with a uh, drama or a, a book club, um, providing opportunities to where when um, they're home at three o'clock, the day isn't over. Because mm -hmm. if, if, if you don't have anything else to do af after 3 p.m., um, you know, especially in, in the youth of today, they're gonna find something to do. Mm -hmm. um, so just providing a little bit more opportunities after school for our youth. And employment. Um, in the summer as well, absolutely. Youth mm -hmm. employment is key and it's part yeah. of the mayor. Um, mayor's vision is to have every high school senior have some type of internship here in the city of Akron, not just in city government, but in all of our organizations and um, industries here in the city of Akron to offer internships to every high school senior uh -huh. to ensure that they have something to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sports fills that role, but a lot of kids aren't involved in sports. So. Yeah, and I don't think that we should limit it to just sports. Mm -mm. I think that especially nowadays, mm -hmm. kids 
they have you know, everything in, in their hands pretty much. So providing multiple opportunities for them, um, not limited in just in sports is something that I'm really, really interested in trying to um, do, working with the community. Boy, I hope you succeed. What kinds of successes have you had? Anything that you can talk about so far? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, um, maybe just talking a little bit more about just the incident that occurred between um, Akron East and Akron Bokdo. Um, you know, the success is one. Um, the um, head athletic directors were highly, highly uh, excited about the fact that the city of Akron is interested in helping out um, with any endeavor around bringing the communities together. But another exciting thing is we are working on trying to create like a combine style approach to bring all of the communities together where kids will have an opportunity to interview um, in um, partnership with a lot of the organizations that are partners of Akron Public Schools. Um, so they'll get a chance to do interviews, but they'll also get a chance to do like a sport combine setting. So we're really strategically trying to figure out ways to bring communities together um, using uh, whatever it is. If that niche is sports, then let's use sports to bring the communities together and let's have conversations around like what it looks like to have a healthy opportunity for the city of Akron for our youth. Is, is bullying a problem in terms of violence? I think bullying occurs in every school district and I think that um, it's something that has gotten worse because of social media. And so I think that that is something that we as parents need to um, be more engaged with our children um, and, and, and talk to them on a daily basis about what's going on in school because bullying occurs in every school district regardless of socioeconomic background. Is there ethnic and racial discrimination in bullying? I'm not in the school with them, but I'm sure that there is. <laughs> there know. is in adult life. Yeah, so I'm I sure that there is there because is. kids I mean, act how their parents act. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, has there been any change in youth violence during the pandemic? Has that affected? We don't have the data in right now, and I know that Summit County Public Health is doing their community assessment, so we will be able to uh, um, ascertain that question at a later date. Without school during mm -hmm. the time that, that yeah. uh, the pandemic mm -hmm. cut classes, I would assume that that gave our youth more time for whatever. Yeah, but we were on lockdown too, so I don't know <laughs> if yeah. they were going out. Yeah. True, <laughs> true. Mm -hmm. um, you have a, a five-point framework for community violence reduction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and obviously prevention, mm -hmm. intervention, mm -hmm. which is what you're trying to do, and support, uh, enforcement, mm -hmm. and what does that mean? So enforcement is working to um, not just arrest the um, apprehenders, but actually ensure that if they've done a crime that we actually keep them in jail for the crime that they've done and not just let them out. If, they, if it's a felony, we want to make sure that they stay where, the, you know, keep them off the streets because they are a harm to the community. Mm -hmm. So that's where we talk about enforcement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, partnership and advocacy is what you've talked about, Danico. Any more on that? Uh, yeah, just right now I'm trying to, um, align our mission with some of those uh, key stakeholders in our community. Um, we've had conversations mm -hmm. with the United Way of Summit in Medina County. Um, we've had conversations with Summit County Public Health, um, Akron Public Schools. Uh, so just kind of like working with some of those key stakeholders um, and then figure out what we can do to work co collectively together is what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, okay. and community accountability does that mean you're going to try to get the community to help with this? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I would think so. Mm -hmm. And obviously, uh, we need to do that. Um, how is this being paid for? How about your position? Currently, um, a lot of this is being paid for through the American Rescue Plan Act dollars. However, after 2026, when the American Rescue Plan Act funding 
and um, we will continue to fund Danico's position through our general revenue. So fund. you're not going to get thrown out? No, I don't think I'll get thrown out. This is, this is a problem mm -hmm. that we want to address full, like 100% and make, it, make a change yeah. in our community. We certainly need to. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us and mm -hmm. good luck to you in containing youth violence. Thank Tameka you. and Danico. Thank you. This is Ardeth Keck for Forum 360 with its global outlook and its local view. Forum 360 is brought to you by John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, the Akron Community Foundation, Hudson Community Television, the Rubber City Radio Group, Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron, Blue Green, Electric Impulse Communications, and Forum 360 supporters.